If you've seen any of my previous gold weapon reviews, then you'll know that every few months Enlisted's Battle Pass ends, removing the oldest unique Battle Pass weapons that remain and replacing them with new awesome ones. Now we don't know what's coming next, that'll be in a future video, so you might as well subscribe so you don't miss that one. But what we do know today is that the RMN50, the Pedersen Rifle and the MKB35-3 are the ones being deleted from the store in the coming days. And the first of these is actually used by your own AI soldiers to kill you in battle. It must have something to do with ChatGPT, surely. AI is becoming too advanced. We'll begin with the mighty team killer itself, the RMN50. It was created by a team of engineers led by Isaac Neyman in 1943, initially for partisan operations. In Russia, as this weapon was a Soviet weapon, this translates from... Well, this, which I'm not even going to attempt to say because you've already told me on stream numerous times that my Russian is atrocious and a link to join us on Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays is in the description. Into Neyman Hand Mortar Calibre 50mm. As it says on the tin, it's essentially a mortar that you don't need to place on the ground before firing. One of the most unique gold weapons in the entire game. It was supposed to use damaged Mosin Nagant gun stocks and the gun barrel of the RM38 or 40 mortar. The rifle's iron sights are also relocated to this new mortar barrel. Notice Notice how the name, RMN, comes from the standard Soviet mortars' name of RM, plus the N for Isaac Neyman, and the 50 part comes from the 50mm mortar shells, as said earlier. It was tested out by special NKVD forces, and trained for the guerrilla warfare the partisans were meant to be carrying out during World War II. However, it was sadly unpopular. Couldn't think why though, I mean, <laughs> look at it, it's so cool, and therefore rejected for mass production. One fun fact is that, according to the Wikipedia page, you know, trust this source as much as you trust your own mother-in-law, the RMN 50 is actually present in solely enlisted and Battlefield 5. No films, television series, anime or other games. I love the idea enlisted are going for these really unheard of and rare weapons. It makes the game itself so unique. Its effective shooting range is between 150 and 350 meters and in game it does kind of mirror this idea as you can hit it at both long and short range. But at short range is where your AI um struggle. And this is because your AI love to kill you over and over with it. I would actually advise against putting this as a primary weapon on any trooper in your squad, which you can still do for any rifleman troop types no others. You can also put it as a secondary anti-tank weapon on your AT gunners, but it doesn't exactly outperform any of the Panzerfausts in this regard, so I don't see why you'd use this, especially considering the sheer thickness of some of the armor in Berlin, even though you can get it in Moscow as well for the Soviets. But how does it perform if you use it yourself? Well, if used correctly, it's actually pretty amazing. And if used poorly, well, then it's worse than a Springfield rifle. Its stats are wildly different compared to any other weapon. Even Euthemia's public document refers to it as its own category. Infantry launcher. <laughs> that actually sounds like it just shoots men. 21 damage instantly kills anyone hit by it directly or in close vicinity, and as the damage dissipates around the area of impact, it will still instant kill or down enemies around 10 meters away from it with over 10 damage. One bullet per mag and a reload speed of 4.5 seconds is kind of bad, but lucky for you, shot dispersion is no problem at 0.05. Its recoil literally doesn't matter if it's a one-shot meme cannon, and it's quick to aim down sights with as well. No penetration as said before though, and you can only get 6 ammo even if you try and add any ammo pack to the soldier. So, make your shots count. As it is unlike anything else in the game entirely, it's really impossible to compare it to any weapon as I'd normally do in these review videos. And because of its insane versatility and how good it can truly be in certain situations, but also to troll your enemies and the teammates alike, I'm going to have to give it a score right in the middle of 5 out of 10 on my gold weapon leaderboard. It's super fun to use in game, super unique and just funny if you can land a hit on a bunch of enemy AI in one room, killing like 20 in one shot. And I'd recommend picking one up if you haven't already just for the memes if nothing else. You have only a few days. The MKB35-3 is next, available in Moscow, Normandy and Berlin. This is a different version of the MKB to the one made in 1942, which I reviewed as a gold weapon in this video. But this one is very different to that one. Still designed by the same legend as Pavel, the equally legendary human that completes research on weapons for these videos, says he is. This is Heinrich Vollmer's fourth version of the MKB, the others being the M35, the M35A and M35-2. Its rate of fire in real life was apparently 350 shots per minute, as they lowered it deliberately from 1000 RPM, which would have made this thing insanely OP, let me tell you if it was kept. God dang it, German engineers, why are you always so efficient? It was way too expensive for mass production, however, so it was not chosen by the Wehrmacht during World War II. And there are only 25 pieces built of this out of all MK35s ever made, including the ones we're talking about today. But how is it in-game? Honestly, 
The answer is not bad at all. You're probably thinking that the 350 rounds per minute fire rate we mentioned earlier in this video makes it awful, but the devs raised it to 400 shots per minute to help balance it in game. Now that is indeed low for a gun class as an SMG or assault weapon anyway, but what you need to realize is that it comes with a 10.0 base damage, one of the highest base damages for an assault weapon in the entire game, only behind the Feder of Automat, a weapon that I ranked second in the entire game in my full top 30 weapons ranking video, which you can watch by clicking in the corner up there. At short range, it has the ability to down an enemy or instant kill them with one hit, but that chance is rare and quickly dissipates as the target gets further away. But even at 100 meters, two hits is more than enough to instant kill any soldier even with the OP plus 35% vitality or health everybody on our enlisted discord server keeps going on about. And that's really good. A 2.4 second reload time is excellent compared to other SMGs too. And its actual recoil, the recoil not in the game stats but as a hidden statistic, shows it is really really low, especially vertically, with really Really, really low shot dispersion and recoil direction. Its magazine size of only 20 and slightly lower ADS speed are counters to it though, more so the former than the latter, so be sure to reload it a lot if you are indeed using it. In my honest opinion though, this weapon is quite funky, a cool looking weapon with a cool firing sound, and performs above average in game. It's not the best weapon by any stretch as its low magazine size and fire rate aren't putting it in a great light, but take nothing away from the rest of it. If you're an early or low campaign level in any of the three campaigns it's available in, I would indeed recommend getting it. It will fall off a of fair amount as you hit the late campaign though, especially when you get its more modern brethren, the MKB-42H, the MP-43-1, or the mighty STG-44, so you likely won't be using it forever. But if you like running unique squads like myself, then let's face it, there's always space. It gets a 5.8 out of 10 for me on my leaderboard, placing it above and better than the German Schmeisser but below the Soviet Degtira, both weapons I've already reviewed in my gold weapon playlist. Last up is the Pedersen Rifle, available in Normandy and Tunisia campaigns for the Allies. This interesting weapon was designed and updated by John Pedersen throughout the 1920s, so it was a rather old school weapon. Initially, it was created as a replacement for the M1903 Springfield, a weapon which I earlier in this video trashed for being bad, so you can kind of assume that this thing is going to be fairly good. It's a semi-auto rifle that was considered heavily, but the M1 Garand, the one we all know and love, was picked ahead of it, which makes this rifle quite unique as far as rifles go and an interesting alternative to spice up your campaign grind, as all gold weapons, in my mind, should be doing. The rifle was also sent to Japan for field testing, and Pavel is using this as a way to make me tell the developers that this should be in the Pacific campaign as a gold weapon, but for the Axis. This Japanese Pedersen would basically be the same though, it would just have a 6.5mm Arasaka ammo instead, which would actually make it more powerful funnily enough. Less than 150 pieces of the Pedersen were ever built, which is sad, as it does perform pretty well in game. With 14.2 base damage, it's a super high damaging semi-auto rifle. Still at 100 meters, it will down or instant kill in one hit, which is great. A reload time of 3.4 seconds isn't perfect however, and is half a second higher than the Garand, yet it does have two extra rounds in a mag at 10 rather than 8, which is indeed important. Its recoil and shot dispersion are both very low compared to the other semi-automatic weapons you have for the Americans, but where it does struggle severely is in its recoil direction, which is one of the worst in the game for semi-autos, and this stat actually makes horizontal recoil feel worse than most. Its ADS speed is a tiny bit lower than the others too, and does not have a bayonet, which is important to note. Overall, it scores a 6.4 out of 10 on my gold weapon leaderboard, just lower than the M1 E5 Garand a gold weapon unique equivalent of the M1 Garand, because this one actually has a bayonet, 1.5 times its ADS speed and almost a third only of its recoil direction. Though both are still very good alternatives to the M1 Garand if you're bored using it, and I would recommend both if you have spare gold orders, just don't expect them to be supremely better than the other gold weapons, as they aren't. This is the last chance you can get weapons from Battle Pass Season 3, so decide now whether you want any of these in this video. Click here for that gold weapon review playlist I keep banging on about so you can make a decision for yourself, or here if you want to see all of the best weapons in the entire game. Massive thank you to Ecolo QE, Laszlo Berry, Narfalex and Vendatrex alongside the other awesome supporters of the channel, and like the damn video before you leave.